in terms of where, where we start, we have to start with understanding what the book is, and that happens on a couple different levels. Uh, what, what the book is as a, as a piece of literature, as a document, as a text, um, and that's part of what I introduced when we talked about the issue of orality and the idea that um, you know, all of this started out with words being spoken. And those words being spoken weren't necessarily written down right away. And when they were written down, they were written down in documents, not in literary works for the most part. Again, there are probably exceptions to that. But written down in documents, documents that were stored in archives, archives which really no one wanted or had access to except the scribes who, who wrote them. Uh, because, again, culture did not, uh, any given culture, society, did not get their information that way. No lending libraries, uh, no access to, to those kinds of archives. It's not that they were hidden or restricted, it's just that's, that's just now how, not how people got their information. So we could, we could talk about them as texts, but we can also talk about it at the larger level of how does one understand it uh, in, in a more theological way. And again, some people have some commitment to this text uh, from a faith standpoint, and other people are content to approach it from a literary standpoint. But even for those who have a text standpoint, who, I'm sorry, a, um, a theology type standpoint, who have been raised in a church context uh, with a faith commitment to the biblical text, Sometimes even they don't quite know how to approach it. I find that one of my biggest challenges when I teach freshmen and sophomores are introduction to Old Testament literature and interpretation. Um, they come into the class uh, already kind of bored out of their minds with the Old Testament. Too much Leviticus. Yeah, exactly. You know, they've tried to read through the Bible thing, and you hit the third week in February, <laughs> Leviticus chapter 1, and you despair. <laughs> and so one of the first things I have to do is try to reorient them to what have we got here in front of us, and how do we get from it something that's of value to it. Many of my students are persuaded that the Bible, including the Old Testament, is God's word, but they have no idea how it's going to function as God's word to them. They haven't experienced that. All they've experienced is frustration and boredom and who knows what all of this is about. So I think even for Christians who take the text seriously, they have to figure out, what am I supposed to be getting when I read this? And if we get tied up in problem passages, and there are plenty of them, mm -hmm. if we get tied up in problem passages trying to figure them out and, and can't figure them out and find out that even the experts can't figure them out, then we say, what good is all of this? So I have to try to turn their thinking around to the idea that we start by having an idea of what this whole thing is about. And my statement is, it's about God. It's not about Abraham. It's not about David. It's not about Jews in the wilderness. It's not about the Ten Commandments. It's not about creation in six days or who knows how long. It's about God. And regardless of whether you can sort out the problem passages or not, you can get a pretty clear perspective about God who's revealed here. Now that also has its challenges. Because sometimes we don't like the picture of God we see there, and that brings its own questions and concerns. So we've got really two levels at which we can talk about this whole thing, uh, as a text and how it came about, and as something that we commit to and have faith in, and what that means and where that points us.